Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Boy, we've got a nice one in the shop today. This is Gottlieb's bank -a ball Wedgehead Pinball Machine. Right from the height of the cool games out of the 60s. Look at this one. Beautiful little machine. It's got a cool green cabinet with just kind of some weird designs on the side, but... Uh, I guess those are supposed to be pool balls, but it has the cool, super thick Gottlieb wed webbing that they did. Look at that. Awesome. Just has this kind of marbleized look, which is kind of a 50s and 60s thing, you know. I've seen clocks that are made like that, too. So they did splatter paint on a lot of the games just to kind of hide the bad... Uh, the cheap plywood that they used. They didn't use cabinet grade plywood. But Gottlieb used this kind of webbing. That's very cool. And it's always a different color too. So on this particular one, it appears to have been blue. Pretty much the same color blue as they used for that stencil. So they would paint it green, roll it on down the line, I suppose. And then some guy would be standing there and he'd say, he'd say Hey, you want me to make it uh, look less... Uh, Less uh, less cheap plywood. Let me hit it with this spray gun. And he'd hit it with a spray gun that had a nozzle on it that was tuned in such a way that it would just kind of shoot crap all over the, the cabinet. And it gave it that cool marbleized look. And all these years later, here it is. So it's very cool. I, I just, I love that kind of, the way they did those cabinets back then. If we, We've got a uh, firepower over here from years later. And by then, they were still stenciling the cabinets, but there's no splatter paint. You know, of course, that's a black one, though, so maybe that's a bad example. Here's a uh, Sonic Prospector. This was made in Spain, actually. And there's no splatter paint on these cabinets, either. But you can see, since there's no splatter paint, you can see every little imperfection on the cabinet. And so the thought was, at the, back at the time, that the the uh, webbing would hide imperfections. Now this one has seen its days and so uh, it has plenty of imperfections now so of course you can see all those but it does hide a little bit of the workmanship not being perfect. What a cool game for a lot of reasons. It's a wedge head. Most of the wedge heads are fun. They're one player games. Usually the one player games had better uh, rules, like a better rule set. Uh, the reason that the multiplayers didn't have quite as good of a rule set, I had someone uh, mentioning it not too long ago, and I, I didn't really think about it, although I kind of already knew it, but I had never kind of put two and two together. On the multiplayer games, whenever they switch players, uh, you can't really have deep rules because then the other person gets the benefit of whatever you did in the game. So uh, uh, some of the games did that, but most of them didn't. So the one-player games a lot of times had better rules. But... Um, you know, the wedge heads are certainly people's favorites. And it's got that stylized look from back then. We'll look we'll look more at this back glass whenever we get time, but on a on a later video, but it appears to actually be plexiglass. Yeah, it is. Let me see if I can you're seeing the church reflected across the street. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, I don't think it'll focus on it. There are scratches on it. This is actually plexiglass. But with that said, it's in pretty much perfect shape. So I don't know if that's a reproduction or if they were all plexiglass originally, but it certainly looks very nice. I like how they drew all of the characters back then too. Everybody just has this kind of look to them. <laughs> so it's dominated by these two characters on the play field, this guy, he's like, Hey, Sally, want to play a hand of pool? He's chalking his stick. And then you've got Sally. She's like, oh, God, this creeps around again. And then you get this chick. And then you got the serious one. This is the pool shark here. 
Look, she's licking, she's, she's biting her tongue. She's serious about it. Couple more up here. And then this guy. <laughs> Trying to blow the ball in. What a cool game. But this one is regarded, too, as being uh, one of the most uh, desirable of these wedge heads. People really like this one. It has an animated back box. So some of the games back then had special things that the back boxes did. We we previously did a, uh, a Gottlieb uh, Masquerade that had a doll in the back, a, a, ba a ballerina in the back glass that spun around and stuff. Very cool. Uh, just something, a little something going on in the back box. Well, on this one, when you uh, get one of the numbers, it corresponds to a pool ball, and the pool ball drops in the back. See the little balls? It falls down in the back, and that's all lit up and everything. Similar to how the old school pool tables worked. So the old coin-operated pool tables, when you made a ball, it would fall in the pocket and then roll down the side of the pool table to a little door in the side where you could see all of the balls lined up just like this. And then uh, they had a coin slot in it where you could slide the, the um, coin in and make them all fall back out. Um, it's a very cool. I guess this was probably just a version though that uh, the, you didn't have to use coins to get the balls out of the pocket. But very cool. All right, so uh, the gentleman brought us this. Let me read to you what I wrote down whenever he brought it to us that needs repair. Okay. He wants me to fix the mechanics. So something's going on with it. Basically give it the one over, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there's a few lights on the play field out. We'll, get, we'll do the lights. There is a back box ball missing. The number four ball is actually missing that falls down. So we'll do a whole thing about that. Uh, he wants us to tighten the lockdown bar. And um, that's it. So that's pretty much what's going on with it. So we need to get it working. The things that he noticed was some of the lights don't work. Uh, we need to tighten the lockdown bar and one of the balls is missing in the back box. So. What we've been doing lately is plugging them up and just seeing what condition they're in when they come in, just so we can kind of watch as we go through and see uh, what we get accomplished. So we'll do that here uh, towards the end of the video. But let's go ahead and look inside of it. Let me pull the glass off and um, we'll lift the play field up and see what is going on inside of this thing. All right, boy, I like this. So let me point out a few things to you that uh, repair people might see different than game players see if you're not a repair person. Um, there's not much in it. So there's a re relay bank here that's you know typical for, for wedge heads. It's going to have stuff like the uh, game over relay and things like that on it. Little strip of relays here. Hardly anything. Score motor which is only even using three of the uh, positions. So sometimes there's extra ones here. Uh, and then if you look at the bottom of the play field, there's nothing serious at all. I mean, there's flippers, kickers, pop bumpers. Other than that, a few stand-up switches, some light bulbs, and uh, four relays. It says number eight target relay on one of them one's gonna be the yeah center pop bumper relay right and left pop bumper relay and then I don't know what that one is so there's just not much there now you might say oh why do you care about that well it's less to break and it's less to work on and uh, if the game is as fun as I've been led to believe it is it's kind of an engineering uh, uh, I don't want to say marvel because it's not like crazy, but it's an engineering accomplishment that they were able to make a fun game without a lot going on, really. And so there's not much in this thing. Now, this, I, this is kind of what I expected because 
they have that big animation piece in the back box. So because of that, that would have cost them more money. So all of these games had a bill of materials, a B-O-M. And they still do. And it's still something that the uh, companies and the designers and everybody fight about. You want to make these things where it doesn't cost you a fortune to build them. And then you can make more profit. And you can also sell them at a reasonable price. So uh, although by today's standards, I guess maybe there's a lot in this. Because it's all made of brass or copper or whatever it's made of. Um, back then, this was not a lot of stuff. So uh, it's just kind of the typical uh, layout, or even a little more sparse than usually, than usual. Uh, and why would why would it have less on this? It's because they had to make up a little money somewhere because they spent the money in the back box. So let me show you what it looks like uh, behind the cabinet. So it has the beautiful original metal back box door, and then in the back box you have the replay unit which keeps track of how many uh, credits are on it. You have the zero to nine unit, or as our buddies at the uh, the goat shed, our, our goat shed buddies, <laughs> the goat shed EM pinball repair palace. They say it looks like a shed. I say it looks like a palace over in Australia. They, uh, they call it the, the, I think they call it the not to nine unit, or it might be ought to nine unit. And they're, they're not saying it, so we'll laugh at them. That's what they call it. <laughs> so I can't figure out if it's not to nine or ought to nine. I think the the uh, zero is, is called ought sometimes, O-U-G-H-T, ought. But it also could be a not because it's a zero. It's a not to nine unit. <laughs> if you haven't heard of them, there's a, there is a uh, couple fellas in Australia that run what they call the goat shed where they repair pretty much EM pinball machines, although I think they have done a few of the early solid state ones because I, th I think they did a Close Encounters not too long ago. But those guys really know their stuff, and I love their channel because they um, they just... I like their spirit. I, I, I try to be the same way whenever I work on the games. I don't like whenever people do videos and they complain about everything and they don't... Oh, uh, this wasn't done right, and you know they 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 talk bad about other repair people, or they talk about oh, this game's in crappy condition. You know, over there they don't have the luxury of having really nice games all over the place. So sometimes some of the games that show up are beat all to crap, and they fix them anyway because they love the games. You also don't see them uh, complaining about um, uh, oh, this game's not as fun as this one or whatever. No, they just take the games as they are. Here's a game, let's fix it and play it. You know, so I, I love that. So uh, if you haven't checked them out, check them out. They're also here on YouTube. If you're looking for a link to their videos, I've got a... Uh, I subscribe to their channel. So if you go to our channel, it'll show you who we subscribe to. And they are listed on there. The Goat Shed Pinball Repair Palace in beautiful Australia. So anyway, uh, they call it the Ot the, uh, to Nine unit. So that's what I'm going to call it. And then you have uh, your three score reels here. You've got, I guess, two-point relays and a reset relay, maybe, something like that. Or maybe it's three-point relays. Um, you got a little bell. There's another bell here that hangs under the ot to nine unit that just claps it. I'll show you that. Are you ready? It's got a clapper on it. So there's a little thing that hangs on the side that, as that chime goes in, it just slaps the side of the bell. Very cool. And then this one is more of your, your typical funk. <laughs> uh, but it's dominated by the animation unit. This is a beauty here. A 15 position target relay bank. There are 15 freaking coils. Look at that. That's got to be the longest one they ever made. Look at it. Look at the beauty of it. 15 freaking coils, switches on every one of the relays, and then a little armature in the front with a little pool ball on it of different colors, one for each ball, that falls down into view if you trip the relay. So there's a, you know, if it tells it, all right, they made ball number 12 or whatever, there is a coil in here. Bam! (laughs) 
Ball number 12 is now visible. Now, I think this thing, something's not right. It's not in the right position or something because you can just barely see the balls. So we'll figure all that out, though. But that's my point. They, they had to put this huge relay bank in there, and they had to put those specially designed balls on the armatures and all of that. Uh, so that would have cost a lot more money. So because they had such a cool little gimmick, whenever they did the play field, they were in a little sparse on it. They just got a lot of targets you can hit to, to knock the balls down because that's kind of the game. That's the whole game there, right? But even with that said, I mean, it's still a full play field. It's just there's no crazy gimmick on the play field or anything. Um, it's just normal stuff. Stand-up targets, your normal three-pop bumpers, and two kickers. And that's pretty much it. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to do... I guess is we're gonna plug it up and see if it works. Now it's not; these haven't been plugged back in, so I'll have to plug the uh, the um, Jones plugs back in, and and uh, then we'll plug it into the wall. Now uh, I've seen the guys on the goat shed too say that they don't even plug them in. I don't either. Usually I don't, but I've started plugging them in lately because I kind of want to show what the uh, customer's experience would have been, you know. Because whenever they get it, of course they're going to plug it in and see if it works. So with the customer bringing it to me, they've already fixed up the play field, cleaned it up, put new rubber rings and all of that on it. But what kind of gameplay experience were they getting or not getting? Is it working a little bit or not working at all? Okay. I've been putting up videos lately where uh, we, we were working on like a tube amp. And everybody's giving me crap about, oh, you plugged it in. Believe me, people. That jukebox, whoever had it before us plugged it in. That's how it works. Then I did a, a uh, radio. Oh, you shouldn't have plugged it in. Well, whoever had it before me plugged it in, believe me. People plug these things in. That's why you see them sometimes with the cord cut off. Because some tech who doesn't want stuff to get burned up cuts the cord off so nobody can plug it in. But um, on a pinball, you don't run a, a huge risk of burning up a transformer or anything by plugging it in if it doesn't work. Uh, it's just likely the motor's going to come on and do its thing and the game's not going to work. But you'll you'll hear the motor spinning or something. So uh, so that's where we're at. So let me plug in uh, the stuff back to this board. Whenever they brought it to us, they probably had it in two pieces, or I know they did. Um, and then we'll see what kind of uh, action we're getting out of it right here from the beginning. Okay, so he's got it so cleaned up. I'm thinking maybe some of it works. I went ahead and plugged it all back in. All of these need clean though. But I went ahead and put them back in, just so we can see what kind of shape it's in coming in. Plug her up. See if we get anything. I haven't worked on a wedge head in a while. I don't even know if they have power switches. They do not. Do they have the left button thing? It does not. Does it have the start button thing? Here we go. Are you ready? Well, that was uneventful. Okay, so it lit up all the lights. It reset the drop, uh, the balls that we had dropped. Boy, I'm a, these games with the these games with ball in the title uh, going to cause me all kinds of problems. I can see where he's talking about a couple of the uh, score numbers. The lights aren't lit. Um, now that I look at it, I see something here I really don't like. We have a bushing problem, people. See how close to the play field that flipper is? Yeah, that, that's dragging the play field. Hear it? That should be up considerably more to where it doesn't actually hit the play field. That's actually damaged it a little bit. Um, hmm. Yeah, so we got to do something about that. So the bushings are shot or misadjusted or... What may be happening is the the the, the uh, flipper mechs underneath may be hanging from the playfield a, a little bit, which has let that drop to where it's dragging the playfield. So that's not good, but we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, so uh, I hit start, and it just turned on a bunch of lights. Let's see if the flippers are working. Yeah, so we're in gameplay. But it didn't drop the balls down. 
thing. So let's uh, let's try hitting start again. I shouldn't be doing that. Okay, the flippers are working. It says five and it gave me ten. What's up with that? I might call in the goat shed on this one for sure. Okay, uh, 50 points on this one. It's not working. It's not working. Okay, so that was the six. And it did drop the number six ball. So some of the stuff is working properly. 13 dropped. Four dropped. All right, so it looks like they've got a partially playing game here, but it's not, uh, the trough is not dropping the balls as it should. Um, and they've got, you know, that kind of reset problem. So, interesting. So it's kind of halfway doing its thing. So that's where we're starting. Um, we'll work it just like we always work it. Take the play field out. Uh, work on the bottom board first work under the play field, work in the back box. And I'm going to have to order some parts because I have to order the missing number four ball. Now you might say, how in the world are you going to find a missing number four ball? That little plastic ball. It looks as if, yeah, these are plastic. So there's one for each one. See how it's made? And they're, they're supposed to be crooked like that. But this one's mix, missing, number four. So you might say, how in the world are you going to find that? Well, the wonderful people at the Pinball Resource, through, I would imagine, considerable cost, have reproduced those things. They are only used on this game, and I think one called Flipper Pool, maybe, something like that. So there were two games that they, that they used those little balls in, and uh, the Pinball Resource actually reproduced the things, even though you we're probably only talking five or six thousand games that were made total that even use them and they didn't just reproduce one of them they reproduced every freaking one of them so if like if you need a number four you just order a number four you need a number number eight you order a number eight um, that's where we get a lot of our parts from so it's pbresource.com pinballresource.com um, so we'll put in an order for for that number four ball now the things are like thirty bucks 31 bucks for a little plastic <laughs> thing. But I'm glad he makes them because if he, if he didn't, what in the world would you do? Nobody makes them. I, I can't imagine what the tooling and everything must have cost to make those happen. Um, so we'll, we'll have to start making an, putting an order together, uh, just little minor stuff like that. Hopefully there's not a ton that it's missing. It looks like the play field is pretty much good to go. So the first thing I think we might do uh, is fix this lockdown bar. So basically, these two little nubs <laughs> are adjustable. And they go down inside these holes. And then there is a receiver in there. By the way, this one's really clean. Uh, there's a receiver in there that if you push this lever it moves a little mechanism inside of there that makes them grab the little nubs look what this says on it. manufactured for Mondial exclusively for export very cool I've never had one like that Okay, so this one's been overseas somewhere. Let's see what the... I wonder what mech that is. Is that just a dime? Interesting. Okay, so uh, whenever it doesn't fit right, it's because that little nub is either too long or too short. So ours is loose, so it's too long. So what's going on is this little piece here... is catching it to hold it in place, to lock it in place. It's a lock bar. 
but since that's a little bit too long it allows you to wiggle it it doesn't actually pull it down with any kind of pressure so we need to tighten that up so how do we do that well there's a little lock nut on there you loosen that with a wrench keeping in mind where the uh, head of the screw is so it's pointing at about two o'clock and then you turn it in a little bit maybe to turn it to four o'clock and then you tighten the nut back up so we're going to do that and see if we can get the fit just a little bit uh, more steady okay so the little lock nut is a 7 16 okay so you turn it now when you turn it a lot of times you're going to turn the screw too so that's why you need to kind of know that it was at two and we're going to turn it to about four oh like this you know <laughs> so we're you know we're turning the whole thing by doing that basically once you loosen that you'll be able to go farther in you know if it is locked together like this it'll just turn the lock the nut up with you and look at this look at this wrench i found in the back we got a whole drawer full of wrenches so it's an old 7 16 What's so cool about it? So it's all beat up. It says USA. I can't tell what make or anything it is, but it looks kind of old. Don't it just look like kind of an old design? Usually they don't, they don't they're not as thin here. So it's probably an old, old, old one. Maybe from the 60s. Okay, so it says USA. It says C L. But look at this. Let me get a, let me get some better focus here for you. There we go. So it says USA CL14. Not sure what that means. Some of you tool guys may know. And then there's this. I guess that's a patent. Five four six six nine five three maybe or nine five six maybe. But look at this. It's Pete's. <laughs> Pete, we're taking care of your wrench, buddy. It's fixing a pinball machine. Thank you, Pete. All right, so we got that back on. Seems nice and sturdy now. Easy peasy. Um, so I think we're ready to... Uh, maybe I could do the light bulbs. Since they've already done the play field, I could see if I could get all of the lights to turn on. Sometimes, though, that's a, uh, a problem with the relay, the relay itself. Um, the switch isn't making good contact or something. Let me flip up the play field, and we'll look under it, and uh, we'll replace the light bulbs and see if any of those are mechanical pro or uh, uh, electrical problems or if it's just light bulbs or burnout. Okay, so I went through and replaced the light bulbs, got them looking nice and bright. And then I got up to here to this one, this number eight one. And it's not lit up, so uh, I wonder what happened. I'm just going to hit this. We're in game mode, by the way. Yeah, okay. So that did not drop the number eight ball. So I saw something interesting on the back that I want to show you. Um, it's kind of illustrative. So all of these little lights are on until their associated target drops. So if I drop like the sixth one, I'll try to do this without getting electro killed. So if I drop the sixth one, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, that's the seventh one. Okay, so I dropped the sixth one. Where is the number six light? Yeah, just what I thought. See how the light is still on? But the number six ball has dropped. Let me show you why that is. It's because someone has went through and done all of these wrong, every one of them. <laughs> and it's not a big deal, it's easily fixable, but they've got them See how these switches are pushed way up in the air? I, I should have noticed that earlier whenever I was showing you it. 
See how the switches are pushed way up on the air on top of that bar? That's not correct. Now you don't need the schematics to figure it out. It's just they're in the wrong spot. Now look at this one. So that is number 15, 14, 13, that's number 12. Ball number 12 is actually right. The blade should be under that thing, that little yellow bar there, so that when this drops, it hits the, the long part of the switch and opens it so that it is no longer connected to the top smaller blade. And when it does that, it will also push it down to connect it to the, the make switch under it. So see how there's a switch? It's hard for me to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's zoom in. All right, so follow me. This one's done correctly, although it may not be adjusted right. When that relay pulls in, we're looking at the back of the relay here, it will let go of this armature and the thing will fall. The number 12 ball is some kind of plastic thing that they rigged up that they designed. Uh, will then fall down into view on that window, but that's how it all works. That armature falls. Well, they have the arm. The armature is actually used in tons of Gottlob games. So when that falls, that little yellow bar there should make it where th this these two switches are no longer touching each other because the bar will physically hit the longer of those blades, both of them, and push them down into the smaller blade underneath. This is wrong. So whenever the whenever the blade is on top of that armature, yeah, it's connecting them, but look how much it's bending them. It doesn't need to bend them all like that. That's crazy. I didn't notice it earlier. So let's drop uh, that one and see what happens when it falls. Okay. Okay, so it has dropped it, but they're still connected. Okay. So that's a really common thing that you see in games. What happened there? We actually we uh, activated the relay, but it didn't make the switches change state. They're still closed. So they were closed, and they're still closed. So what's the point of the relay? It's useless. All it did was make the ball vi the ball visible down there, right? but it didn't actually change the state of the switches. That's how you know it's wrong. You don't even need the schematics. You don't need to understand it. It moved and nothing happened. Nothing changed. So this one, I don't know if it's, if it's adjusted correctly, but it's at least in the right spot. Okay, so this one is under the blade. So with it in the top position right now, oh wait a minute, which one are we doing here? Let me make sure I'm doing the right one. Yeah. So this one is under the blades, which means since it's in the reset position, it's pushing the blades together. When it falls, oh, and look at the one under it. When it falls, well, if I can find it, I'm on the wrong one. I'm working blind here, people. Oh, I see. Actually, that that one's bad too. Oh, I, I, was, I filmed the wrong one. Here, let me. Luckily, I can reset it. Let me make sure I get the right one here for you. Okay. All right. So it's above it. When it falls, it opens it. And notice that it connected the one down below it too. Now that yeah, I don't know if that's adjusted right, but it should be. So once you adjust them, that is the way you want to go. With those switches way up in the air, they're bent all out of place. That's not how they're, they should be. It looks like, yeah, that one's bad too. So every one of them except for one is misadjusted. And that's number 13. No, it's number 12. Number 12. Let's see if the number 12 light actually turned off. Looking for it. All right, so we'll have to go through that in the future on another video, but I think we've gone about as far as we can go on this today. It's getting late. There's some kind of band playing outside. I got to go out and see what the party's all about. So leave your comments down below. We'll do another video where we keep working through it. Uh, but luckily, this one already, some of it's working. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll get back into it next time. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And by the way, if you want to know how you can support our channel, 
if you like our channel now if you don't like our channel don't support us but if you do like our channel there is a link down below all of our videos that takes you to Amazon now what in the world would you do on Amazon well if you're planning on buying anything on Amazon if you click our link first it gives us a little nibble of your purchase price of whatever you buy so we appreciate everybody that's been doing that and last but not least don't forget to check out my brother Donnie my brother Donnie has his own channel here on YouTube where he uh, uh, fixes up vehicles things like that he's he's quite a character if you think Joey and I are characters Donnie got all of the character gene he's 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 twice the character we are so go check out his channel I'm over there with him a lot of times and uh, we will see you on the next video what a cool game this is going to turn out to be